Welcome to the MSME Radio Network. The broadcast shows are for informational and entertainment purposes only. They are not designed to provide listeners with specific personal, medical, or counseling advice. Individuals with a medical issue should always consult their health care provider. MSME is not responsible for content of individual shows. The views expressed by show hosts or their guests are their own. Enjoy the show. Hi, this is Don Melanie, and now welcome to another episode of my series titled Managing Self, where I basically go through some, uh, well, I share with you some of my days of um, me managing myself with multiple sclerosis, um, the kind of ups, the downs, and the sideways, as I like to say, for um, for the past almost 20 years, which if you've listened before, you're quite aware of that. Now, I'm sure most of you out there listening today know exactly what multiple multiple sclerosis is, um, for, and, and, and of course what it is, what it isn't, and I always say what it can be. Um, at least a, a rather solid understanding of, of, of just that. Um, you know, I, I always think of the scariest is um, not what it is or what it isn't, but what it can be. You know, just the uh, indeterminate or uh, unpredictable nature of the um, of the disease. You know, the, the the progression of the course that it can take or cannot take. That that's scary to me. Um, but today, I want to start today by saying, you know, how, how do how do you answer the question when a stranger, or sometimes even a close friend or family member, approaches you and asks a question like, "What is MS?" <laughs> me personally. I know that I've gotten really good at reciting the textbook answer. Um, multiple sclerosis, or MS, is a, a long-lasting, um, thus chronic, disease that can affect your brain, spinal cord, and optic nerves in your eyes. Um, it can cause problems with your vision, your balance, muscle control, and basically other basic body functions. Um, if, if the person who, who asked me, you know, like, what is MS, what, is, what, 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 what does it do? Um, first, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a little spiel of that, you know, just the basics. And um, I can, I'll, I'll I generally, generally, I know that I, I'll continue to clarify that MS, multiple sclerosis, is not the same as MD or muscular dystrophy, which people often get the two confused just because of the, MSMD, but um, a lot of people are familiar with um, Jerry's kit, uh, the, the marathon for uh, to raise funds to uh, find a cure for muscular dystrophy. Anyway, it's not the same thing. Both very, very uh, serious um, symptoms and very s- serious uh, diseases. Now, muscular dystrophy or MD is a group of muscle. It's basically a group of muscle diseases that result in increasing weakening and breakdown of skeletal muscles. You know, basically muscles that's connected to the skeleton to um, to form part of the uh, the mech- mech- mechanism or mechanical system that you know helps us move our limbs and other body parts. Muscular dystrophy affects that. Um, you know, um, a, a, a muscular disease. Um, simplest way that I, I often sum it up, I, I try not to get too medical termy because I'm not a medical profession. Um, but but the simplest way that I sum up sum it up when a like I say a stranger, or close friend, family member, whoever asks me about multiple sclerosis, is I generally give them the, the response that multiple sclerosis is a degenerative neurological disease. See, not a muscle disease, but neurological disease. Um, you know. Muscular dystrophy is a degenerative muscular disease, and that and that's the main difference. Um, you know, kind of give people an overview of the difference between the two um, ailments. Now, of course, I like to talk, and I'm sure some of you are quite aware of that. But you know, if I you know give them the uh, kind of blanket answer, you know, MS is this, and you know, neurological chronic illness. And if I if I if I sense there's like this lingering misunderstanding, or shall I say they're not understanding, uh, I'd say incomprehension, let's say that, um, I generally will tend to go with the visual as best to my ability. Now, me, my best visual to show them uh, the difference the difference between muscular dystrophy and multiple sclerosis is, me, I'll just, I'll simply, fec- I'll simply just lift my arm and I'll flex a bicep. 
you know, about 12, 12 and a half inches for me. Um, pretty sizable, I guess, um, considering I'm only 5'4", you know, more than 110 pounds at about 5% body fat. So usually, um, I'll, I'll, I would say, see, there's nothing wrong with my muscles. I can do a lot. But then I give the, uh, the qualification. Sometimes. Not always. And, of course, there's stuff that I can't do. Like, I can't do a jumping jack. Then I'll go on to tell them that, you know, understand this. The fact of the matter is, multiple sclerosis, which is a neurological disease, I can't, there's basically a disconnect between my brain and everything that it's supposed to control. Um, yeah, and, 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 and of course, I like analogies and metaphors and whatnot. And I may, you know, if they're still kind of have that look in their look, look in their eyes, kind of like confused and they're not really quote unquote getting it. I'll, I'll use one of my silly uh, metaphors and say, oh, it's kind of like it's kind of like my brain and you know what it's trying to control. It's kind of like a it's kind of like the reception of a, a small television dish, you know, during a a torrential downpour during let's say a hurricane, um, you know, category three at least. Um, you know, the, 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 the television um, signal is going to, to relay blips and bleeps, you know, scrambled pixels on your television screen. But, um, you know, they're, 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 they're going to be there, but they're not going to be arranged so you can uh, get the picture. And, you know, that pretty much sucks, especially when you, you know, pay like 89 bucks to watch some, you know, heavyweight fight or something like that. But... You know, basically, it's sending the signal. The signal is all. The signal is is, is scrambled, and um, it's just no real determinate picture. Um, like I said, that's kind of what MS is. You know, the communication between the brain and the uh, body parts that it's supposed to be controlling is often scrambled. Okay, at this point, if I've gone through and explained, you know, the scientific definition of what multiple sclerosis is, and even uh, explain the differences between multiple sclerosis and muscular dystrophy, I, I do kind of expect some feedback, you know, that they either understand or they don't understand. And if they want me to, you know, go on and clarify more, I'm more than willing to. But I guess what's still, what what's still, I don't know, I'll be honest, I guess, con- I want to say sadden- saddens me, but I guess kind of confuses me is, uh, it seems like I'm, always hit with the uh, with some dismal apologies like I'm sorry followed by you're doing so well you know I can't tell you know and, and my mom my mom always taught me to to say thank you when someone gives you a compliment like oh you look so good you know I can't tell you have a mess that that's all good that's all good but like I said my mom always taught me to if someone gives you a compliment to say thank you um, and and definitely, you know, anything nice like that in that nature, positive, you know, I'll I'll recognize the um, the the compliment, and uh, I'll say thank you. I'll, and I'll say thank you because, like I said, my mom taught me to, you know, to, to do that, and um, I, I I reckon that this is their <laughs> uncomfortable attempt to be nice. You know, sometimes people don't know how to do when they meet people who are different than they are. So they're like, okay, she has, she has this illness. You know, maybe be nice. So I, I understand that. A lot of times, you know, I've been in that situation. You, you over, over, um, overcompensate and 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 and, and over overcompensate with niceties toward that person, in which it may be a situation you're not used to. So that's all. That's that's good. But I, I don't need it. I really don't need it. And. Um, I just hope, hopefully that, I hope that, you know, the, the, the he or she, the person who's, who's saying these compliments, that after talking with me, you know, discussion, uh, dialogue, that um, they can take more from it. That, that is, I mean, I hope that they take more from our discussion than I will. Again, Mama, if, if you're listening, you prob- probably are. I just want, want to assure you that I always respond with the obligatory things, and um, I and I, I I'm sincere as I can be with it, but of course I put my own twist to the response, so that that leads me to talk. It, you know, basically opens the door for me to talk, 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 and talk. You know, yes, I do have MS. I've had it for almost 20 years, and 
as cliche, pardon me, as cliched as it is, I'll say it again. MS doesn't I have MS. MS does not have me. You know, my my MS is unique, and um, I'm not offended by being coined special because I am. Um, no other individual has my MS, the same symptoms as I have, and and so forth. Um, and it, it was it was interesting. Uh, I guess I guess a week ago or so, my husband my husband and I attended a, a meeting. It was an MS meeting, and the speaker, the speaker, I think I think she said it best. I thought it was pretty. I thought it was pretty cute, and I wrote it down. And so I'll give her credit for it. Um, she mentioned that her son. Uh, she 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 says she was reviewing her, her her notes for her presentation, and her son interpreted her presentation as what a mess. Now, I think I don't know if he heard her or saw, but he probably heard her, you know, because because it was the title "What is a mess?" But I, I guess he maybe heard her say it and see the uh, the uh, overhead. But he thought she was giving a presentation on what a mess. And, and ironically, I guess I, I do agree with her, but the kid was kind of right. Um, what a mess. <laughs> you know, it, 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 I, th- I, I found it funny. I still do because, you know, that notion of innocence that, you know, we often refer to with children's simplicity of, uh, of uh, facts and uh, relationships with things. You know, their lack of, pardon me, their lack of knowledge in some areas and their uh, just overall purity. You know, not yet spoiled by any of the day-to-day mundane affairs that we go through. You know, that 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 innocence is what makes it so cute to me. You know, and like I said, her her son said he she thought he pardon me he thought she was presenting on what a mess, and actually it's kind of true. She was presenting on the topic what is MS because I'll admit I'll admit me personally like I said almost 20 years dealing with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis. And I'll admit, MS can be a mess. Me, personally, I don't like messes. Um, that is, things that are dirty, um, things that are in an untidy state, or uh, situations, situations that, that are plagued with plot problems, um, a lot of confusion involved. I, I don't like things in a disorderly fashion. You know, sometimes I've been accused of being a um, uh, obsessive compulsive. You know, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, but it's just that I know that my my brain can't relax when there's stuff everywhere. Um, you know, and you know, I, I say this, and believe you me, I I do have MS, and sometimes I don't feel like doing things. I can look right right now. I'm sitting sitting in my office. I'm looking around, going, Ugh, seriously, don't need to uh, address that. Um, I don't like when things are just strewn across the floor, um, like right now mail i have mail some random not random mail but mail that i i have the intent to file it but honestly i know that well it'll get done when it gets done that's all i can say no time frame um it'll get done that's that's about as as as, as hard a fact that i can give at any point but um I, um basically i wanted to say that you know when things are disorderly in a mess I, I i get a headache and not so much physically but i think more of a, more of a mental headache where I know that it stresses me out and um, I know that a large portion of society especially western society when someone gets a headache they generally reach for some sort of NSAID you know non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug um, such as aspirin or Tylenol or is it the blue one uh, Aleve and yeah they'll reach for that and they'll, they'll, they'll pop a couple of those and I'll admit I know from my experiences of and be taking that those over over the counter medicines when I had a, a, a physical headache. Um, I know that generally the headache subsides pretty quickly. Um, you know, today I I, I have my reservations of um, really reaching for any of that stuff. Uh, first of all, I don't. First of all, I think I think I'm fortunate that I don't really get many headaches. I probably maybe two in a year total. But um, anyway, my after my diagnosis with the MS. Um, the more, the more I became educated about MS, you know, like what, what it is, you know, what MS is not, what it can be. I really, I really started to, um, respect my body, really respect me. And, um, I've said it earlier, I'm not a doctor. 
Um, I have no formal training in the medical field and, um, I don't, I don't claim to be ever, but, but, but I, I will say, I'll say that I am a, uh, I'm a specialist in all things Don Melanie related. And, uh, like any specialist I know about me, I, you know, I know, I, I know just everything about me. I know what I experience. I know when, where, how my experiences have occurred, but more importantly, I, I recognize my uniqueness and I'm so glad that I do recognize my uniqueness from day one when my MS symptoms onset. It was back in September 1998. You know, I, I still recognize that this, I, you know, back then I didn't realize I was becoming a specialist in Don Melanie, but, or even a Don Melanie who has MS specialist. But back then I was just thinking, okay, you need to, um, communicate you know you need to eventually um relay this um inf- relay this information that i have about me to my medical um i, I call them my medical crew but the um the, the professional me- in the, the professionals in the medical field that would be um treating me in the future so at first i didn't even it took six months to even diagnose me and um you know i was like going here 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 i had so much information um Every every episode I had where I couldn't walk or talk, I mean, I would stutter and the right side of my body would lock up on me. My legs would lock, my right my right leg, that is. I couldn't walk. My um, right hand would freeze up. I would drop things, stuff like that. And my right eye, I would like a wink. <laughs> I'd give you a wink, like, hey. But no, I would give you a wink because I couldn't see. And I thought that was, it. well, I knew it was my way of kind of a, working with the situation so that I could focus and still, you know, carry on to the best of my ability. So I didn't know I was becoming an MS or pardon me, a Dawn Melanie specialist, but I'm glad that I did do the uh, documentation. So, um, I would be able to communicate effectively with my, um, my, my, my treating, uh, doctors. Um, like I said, um, I wrote down everything and, you know, one, one thing with MS, you know, like I said, it, MS, what, what a mess or MS is a mess or, you know, yeah, it, it can be, um, stressful mentally. I know for me, sometimes it can, especially when people don't understand what you're going through. And like I said, if someone asks me, I have no problem with telling them what I am experiencing, but at, at the same, at the same time, I'm always quite aware to inform them that I am not, I'm not textbook or I'm not the only way that it can be. So, you know, kind of giving them the, uh, a feel that, you know, if they do uh, run across someone else with MS, be open to the fact that they may be going through different symptoms at any given time. They may have different stressors or different levels or di- different ways of how, how they are handling their situation, or as I like to say, how they're handling their MS, because again, my MS is my MS and their MS is their MS. So again, communication is, I think, key to, like I said, for, for, for MSers or for everybody to share news or ideas about themselves and with multiple sclerosis or with any medical condition, um, when, when we're dealing with our uh, healthcare providers, I think it's crucial that we, um, document what we're going through, especially when we meet with our doctors so that we don't, well, I know oftentimes we probably 90% of the time, there's going to be like one little thing that, Oh man, I wish I would have remembered to, to ask about this or tell them about that. And, um, you know, the easiest way to uh, prevent that is, um, like I said, I wrote down, back then I wrote down everything. And back then I used my Franklin Covey. Um, today, everything's digital. At least, I'd say 95% of what I use is digital. Um, you know, whether it's some sort of cloud service, <laughs> like Google Cloud or something like that. Um, or, you know, using your, your your phone. Everybody's phones have so many apps they can uh, take notes and things like that. So So everything's digital, but at the end of the day, documentation is crucial and uh, because I think it's a it's it's important for proper effective communication so I want to stress that and I I I recommend that you all any listeners out there please you know notepad whatever you have keep it with you at all times and ready to write or should I say ready to jot communication the method of transferring information which permeates every aspect of our lives, whether it be verbal or um, physical communication or, you know, body language, things like that. Every aspect of our lives is uh, affected by communication. 
And uh, fortunately, I seem to have a an innate propensity to do so, that is communicate with ease. But it wasn't always so for me, especially when um, when those awful MS symptoms onset, um, the stuttering, etc., uh, the intention tremors. You know, it, when I think when I think about it, you know, it's actually still easier to laugh than to cry. When I think of how I how I even completed my um, assignments at school. Um, you know, my, see, my MS symptoms onset in 1998, and um, I was working full-time as an auditor, and I enrolled in an MBA program, like, shortly, just before the symptoms onset. And um, it's so funny, I go, thank goodness, because if it wasn't for being busy, you know, with my classes and assignments and things like that, you know, I don't know what I would have done, probably gone crazy, because I'm kind of a, you know, type A personality and need to get things done. But, you know, like I say, looking back on, on me and the, the assignments and things like that, you know, oftentimes remember, you know, the stuttering and oftentimes I fumbled, especially during presentations. And um, sometimes we have to go out and interview people for a um, project. Um, it, was, it, was a, it was a tad embarrassing, to say the least. But one thing I didn't do is I didn't focus on, you know, all this negative stuff that, you know, I was going through and like, okay, what I, what I couldn't do, I couldn't um, talk without stuttering or, I, you know, I would shake or, you know, the, the things that seemed, or even walk without you know, fumbling and, you know, bringing attention to whatever was going on with me. I, I, I didn't focus on that, but instead I, um, I kind of kept my, kept my eye on the prize and that is, um, getting my MBA. But why, 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 why? What was happening to me? You know, of course, I thought, you know, why is this happening to me? But but then I was like, well, whatever. What is happening to me? You know, first and foremost, what is happening to me? You know, and whatever it, whatever it was, which later I found out was MS. Um, it took six months to diagnose. And, you know, I finally got an exp- explanation of what was going on with my body. And, um, you know, what, like, what, why, why my body seemed to be rebelling against me. You know, I'm like, this, seriously? This is, this is crazy, you know, I, I didn't hear of anything like this prior, but once I got the diagnosis, I was like, okay, and I was like, I just want this fixed, I just want it repaired, and, um, you know, that, that damaged myelin sheath covering my nerves, this is what I'm talking about, I just wanted that fixed, um, you know, so that these little uh, disconnects between my brain and to my body function, body parts would, would function normally, and, um, Today, that desire exists not only for me, but ultimately a cure for everyone, for, for anybody who's suffering from multiple, multiple sclerosis. So later that night, we actually were talking about, you know, MS and how silly it is, um, you know, the damaged nerves and things like that. And he's like, you know, baby, if I could, I would, I'd, I'd fix it for you. And I don't know if I asked him, would he put duct tape on it to... Uh, and it kind of cover up the, the nerves to repair any of the uh, damage, like any holes or frays that it may have. But he but but he said he would use a, a wing nut. And I was like, huh, a wing nut? He's like, yeah, a wing nut. I'd like, you know, kind of twist it and kind of get, get, get everything back together again. So I did, I wasn't quite sure, but I, I later looked it up. And I do know what a wing nut is. Um, and in case any of you out there are not quite aware of what this is, um, definition is a um, it's a type of nut with uh, two large metal wings on either side so that it can be easily tightened and loosened by hand without using tools so it's kind of a little manual twisty 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 uh, mechanism on the ends of the um, of the nut so I was like okay a wing nut so it's funny because I was like oh that's kind of cute now in the land of hardware um, nuts and bolts. Um, a nut is a type of fastener with a threaded hole, and it's, it's said that nuts are almost always used in conjunction with the mating bolt to fasten multiple parts together. Now, in my case, like I said, my husband said he would be my wing nut. Um, that's great. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, honey. Um, you know, and I'll, 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 from here on out, I'll, I'll sometimes refer to you as my wing nut. Um, now, whether I'm your bolt or not, I'm not sure, but you know, it was, I thought it was pretty cute for you to say that, um, you know, because we don't even know 
when I say we, we, myself, other sufferers with multiple sclerosis, um, a lot of people in the medical field don't know the exact science of how to cure this ailment that's um, widespread worldwide. So, you know, like I said, I just want to say that I thought that was kind of cute that we go to this uh, lecture, MS lecture, and um, because of uh, the lecturer's communication, you know, my husband, he, he, um, he really, he, he got the related information and applied it to his line of work and to what he can <laughs> kind of relate to as far as hands-on a, um, a similar uh, method or I guess analogy or similar, okay, what's the word, what's the word? I, I reckon an application in, in his line of work. So he you knows about nuts and bolts, I guess, and things like that. So I thought it was kind of cute that he, um, that that's what he got from this lecture, lecturer, um, and more importantly, that her her speech, her her um, her discussion was able to trans transfer the information in a way that my husband understood that related in his world. So not not so much of an, an MS world and not in so many uh, medical terms, but a very uh, common 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 terms like that. Um, so. Uh, again, communication is key, and uh, I I think it's uh, I think it's grand that he um, he got it just from communication of the uh, oral communication given in the uh, pardon me in that lecture. Today, I hope that each of us, not just myself, but each of us with um, suffering multiple sclerosis or any other um, ailment, that we all can mindfully be flexible and adjustable. Um, just as a wing nut can be adjusted, loosened, or tightened manually without any special tool, I hope that we all can be just the same. I know I, I mentioned earlier how I, I'm not really big on taking um, over-the-counter uh, met fixes like aspirin and things like that for um, for minor pains. But, um, you know, I believe the same kind of goes with I know, I know with my MS, the way I manage myself is instead of so, so much worrying about the reliance upon, um, drugs and things like that, I try to, um, utilize, or I, I, I purposely mindfully elect to use, um, more holistic approach of, of doing things that, that includes eating, um, better. When I say eating better, I mean making healthier decisions as far as, uh, food consumption, um, exercise, daily exercise, um, you know, it helps with heart, it helps with, uh, me maintaining mobility, things like that. So, you know, being mindful of, um, myself, being mindful of the decisions that I make, like I said, eating, exercising, um, earlier I mentioned, I don't like clutter. So sometimes I know I, I myself will let things build up, but let's be mindful. So we don't get to the point of, it gets to a level that we're really aggravated stressed out and, um, you know, maybe risk, you know, an MS flare up. So, um, I guess that's my, as I, as I close today, um, I'll, I just want each of you out there to be mindful, be mindful of, um, ways that you can be <laughs> like a wing nut. And, and that is as far as managing your MS, again, being flexible and being adaptable that, um, you know, kind of what if things come up, Maybe you're tired one day more so than not. Take a nap. You know, be mindful of yourself because no one knows you like you do. Like I said, I am an expert. I'm an expert in Dawn Melanie, and I encourage you all to be an expert in yourselves and have a happier life with uh, with anything that anything that's thrown your way. Not just multiple multiple sclerosis, but anything. Again, this is Dawn Melanie, and I do thank you for joining me today.